Richard J. Watson, the J stands for James. I was born in North Carolina, a place called Baton, B-A-D-I-N, Baton, North Carolina, 1946, right after the war. I was raised uh, in my primary years by my grandparents, my fraternal grandparents, my father's mother and father. Um, my brother and I, um, our, mother's, our mother died when we were like four and, and uh, like five and three. So I was three and three and a half, and my mom died of tuberculosis. And my father was uh, a young man who was working at the time, but also singing with a gospel group, he and some of his brothers. So being in, involved with the lifestyle of being um, mobile and touring the country, my grandparents were our first parents, took on the leadership role in my family. I got here through going to New York to live with my, my mother's sister when we got up in some primary grades because at that time when they passed the um, Brown versus Board of Education desegregation of schools in 1954, um, my Aunt Gladys petitioned my grandmother to say, why don't you let, let um, us take the boys uh, up here in New York so that, you know, educational opportunities are different, the schools are more diverse. So my grandparents were getting older and that was an obvious good move to make. And that's how I got to, to New York. And from New York, years, some years later, my father remarried. And at the same time, my aunt who took us there was pregnant, having to start her own family. So we came to Philadelphia to live with my father and my stepmother. So that's from that period on, around 1958, 59, I was in Philadelphia and have been here ever since. You know, I was taken by row houses and, and multi-level family dwellings. So that was kind of different, you know, people stacked on top of one another. I stayed with my uncle in West Philadelphia, and so by, it took me about eight months to a year to really become acclimated to a city environment. You know, I've always been uh, inquisitive, and my imaginations go beyond just uh, agendas of what's around me. I, did, I was not about um, seriousness. I was a class clown. I was um, unsettled about what to uh, what to um, pursue. So I was enjoying life like a 13 or 14 year old person would enjoy life. I hung out in the schoolyard, yeah, played basketball with the guys. But I had a more of a dedicated focus on art because I had done it when I was younger. And so I really seriously undertook to do some serious work. I enjoyed it. And uh, being in an art place where you have all kinds of materials at your disposal, it, it makes it a lot easier to experiment, let your imagination run wild, and do some things that even in a very orthodox manner of what anyone's trying to teach you, I, I sort of wanted to do what I wanted to do with the materials at hand. And so the teacher was like, yeah, you're pretty got some talent there. And I said, well, okay, you know, whatever. You know, don't bother me right now. You know, I'm not trying to learn anything. I'm just trying to have some fun. And um, he saw that as a matter of, a, I guess, a paradigm for what artists are about. You know, you exp express yourself, self-expression. And he said, boy, you got some good, you got some good things going on here. He showed me the value of some of the things I was playing around with and how I could organize those into some, uh, some, some process of doing things beyond just messing around. So my art teacher expressed to me that you should apply for art school. And we have a guy who went to Ben Franklin right down the street there at the school at Broad Street, Broad and Cherry, which happens to be the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. And he said, you had to get a portfolio together, and he started working with, you know, the process. He told me how to come down to the school and pick up an application and all of the whole, the whole thing about getting ready. So that's, what, that's how I got involved with, with the institution of art. That's the beginning of my professional insights toward development as an artist. Going to art school and going to cin in Center City was a relief from being in the neighborhood. So spending time in school was pretty cool to do, and that's what I did. Now, and that was in 1964. 1965, a year later, during that semester, the um, the, the integration, uh, the demonstrations to inter integrate Gerard College started a block from my house. 1965, May 1st, and so. 
getting involved with um, that movement propelled me into art as an active weapon toward expressing my own political community, my values, my insights. So I've started drawing people on the picket line, taking my sketchbook and uh, becoming an active, almost a photo, almost a, an artistic journalist toward um, materials that prompted uh, me to be drawing action figures. So I applied um, those drawings to paintings and I started to uh, paint my political realities into my subject matters. If I, there was a model in a class, I, would, I might use that model's pose as, a, as, as an asset for me to express something I wanted to say politically to the point where uh, some of my instructors said, well, you know, I see what you're doing, you know, but but this model is doesn't, you know, that that's not what the model is doing. I said, well, this is what the model is helping me express. You know, I have hundreds of things that have been around me from my, you know, environment at, in my art art uh, art space. I liked Norman Rockwell a lot when I was a youngster. You know, I looked at those illustrations he did for Saturday Evening Post narratives on American life and those kind of, Winslow Homer, uh, Vincent Van Gogh, Salvador Dali, Henry Tanner, Romare Beard. And so when you look at those kinds of aspects of different genres of painting and expression, um, they're just different. They're different. Do some of that, do some of this, do some of that, do some of this. And by experimenting in different mediums, I'm not, I don't have a, I don't have a, I don't have a, um, priority medium to work with. I have a inventory of materials. I can do anything in the world at any time endlessly. You know, inventory of paints that do anything, materials that I can put together, tools. And so it depends on how I feel at any given moment. So I had a not a sense of, of rebellion, but a sense of independence about um, I'm enjoying this thing. My ride here is, is, is free and easy, and at the same time, I'm not strapped to one side of the, of the roller coaster. And the Black Arts Movement came about, and it was named such because the, the, um, the uh, on the scene versus the Civil Rights Movement plus the reaction to it through creative forms that black people were doing. So if you were doing things that expressed the strife of the times, the war or the effort of, of discrimination and the whole idea of marginalizing people because they were black or people of color, then it was turned black art, black arts movement. You, your work fits over there, or if you were a gallery, they were, weren't going to show it because what are, our, what are our clients going to think that we support what you're doing with this that kind of stuff? So my, my input and my inroad into maybe being included in that is that um, I documented great things through uh, the great movements through my work and they're still standing, they're lasting and they are perennial, they keep coming back because they're relevant. I worked out of a relevant agenda more so than a shock and awe, what's next to paint about. So the impetus for what I've done throughout my period of development has been a wide range of things and I worked as a, an activist in the civil rights movement uh, I, I was hired to work as a job developer for the Urban League of Philadelphia, job recruiter. Uh, I've, been, I've been a drug counselor in uh, Philadelphia Psychiatric Center working with methadone patients, art therapists there. Uh, I was a member of the Freedom Theater. I've been an actor. I've, I developed part of the founding member of the Freedom Theater in Philadelphia. Uh, during that period of time, I was picked up by some people from uh, Universal Studios. I've been an actor of, on film with Sidney Poitier in a film, been an extra in some other films. Um, I was part of the Model Cities program, directing uh, a drama department for a while. Um, the Mural Arts program, I was one of the early people teaching art in their satellite programs. All of my compatriots who are artists, who do things out of the integrity of their life and base their futures on uh, saying that I'm not risking anything by being truthful and honest to myself. That is, that is a monument to their creativity and they are standing forever because they, what they do is perpetuate 
through their integrity and through their authenticity something of value. I think the true artist is the one who is not trying to produce something that somebody's going to like, but they're producing some things that come out of their own intrinsic ethnic, their own intrinsic sense of values and their attention to this is the way I can say what that does not say. Every day I feel accomplished and I've done something meaningful and um, that's what gives me more energy to do more. It's nothing more more uh, pleasing than to have your family love you for doing something that they honor you through.